Hello, everyone. My name is Rob Spurk. It's so great to see so many people joining our event today. I'm a product marketing manager at Project Lead the Way, and I would like to welcome you to our webinar. Today, we're bringing together educators from across the country to discuss ideas about how to sustain PLTW programs past your first year. We all know keeping PLTW programs helps your school and your district build equity, confidence, and achievement for, for students regardless of gender, race, background, and financial status. Now, before we begin, I wanna share a few tips on how to maximize your webinar experience. Please join the conversation, share your story, and ask questions by engaging with fellow participants and subject matter experts. The chat has been enabled for this webinar and we invite you to use it for these purposes. We have PLTW team members joining us today to answer your questions and help facilitate conversations in our breakout sessions. Now, don't worry if we're unable to answer your questions live today. We'll follow up after the webinar with additional information and answers to outstanding questions. So today we're gonna to give you a high level overview of PLTW and the various funding options schools and districts have to implement programs. Next, we'll break out into groups to hear from your peers on what they are doing to sustain their PLTW programs. After chatting with your peers, we'll round out our time by answering any questions you have. First, I'll share a brief overview about Project Lead the Way. You may be very familiar with, with what you're implementing, but not the broad range of our offerings. Our pre-K through 12 pathways in biomedical science, computer science, and engineering engage students in hands-on activities, projects, and problems. You've seen how this empowers them to solve real-world challenges and inspires them to reimagine how they see themselves. Now, now I'd like to transition to our presenter for this afternoon, Will Krebs. He's the Senior Vice President of Policy and Government Relations. Will. Thank you, Rob, and I echoes Rob gratitude to all of you for joining us this afternoon, and I hope everybody's doing well. Like Rob said, my name is Will Krebs, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Policy and Government Relations for Project Lead the Way. I'm going to lead us through the details of PLTW investment categories and specific funding opportunities. I'm going to be going through this pretty quickly, so just keep in mind that you'll be receiving this deck, and for each subject I touch on, we've created additional resources that you'll also receive. And these resources cover everything I say today and then some. So with that, let's begin. Before we discuss specific funding opportunities, I'll first describe the PLTW cost structure. PLTW programs vary in cost, but each program includes investments in three categories, participation fees, professional development, and equipment and supplies. The participation fee is an annual fee that covers all of the curriculum access and software rights that you need for your PLTW programs. To be able to teach one of our courses, a teacher must be trained by PLTW in our core training experience, which is the professional development cost. This is an online training led by some of the very best PLTW teachers in the country. Lastly, our curriculum is project-based and very hands-on, so there are some equipment and supplies that you will need for implementation. I give you that overview first because as I discuss funding opportunities, I will try to align the specific investment category that you see here with the specific funding source so you know which goes with which. The first funding source we'll look at is the American Rescue Plan. This act was signed into law in 2021 and is a broad economic stimulus package designed to address various needs related to COVID-19. Included in this package are funds specifically for the education system. And you'll see this two ways. You'll see uh, American Rescue Plan funds and you'll see us refer to ESSER, uh, one in the same. These funds are one time and must be spent by September of 2024. These funds are also highly flexible and represent a very unique opportunity to innovate and create equity and access within your school. Because these funds are so flexible, it could make sense to use ARP funds in a variety of ways relative to the PLTW program. These funds align to all three of the PLTW investment categories, participation fees, equipment and supplies, and professional development. For resources here, I'm pointing you to additional materials from PLTW describing how PLTW fits within the purpose of these dollars, as well as a US Department of Education landing page that includes state-specific plans. 
When you think about using ARP funds, your first stop will be to consult with your local district's plan, which would have been developed last summer and provide more details for, for how those funds are to be used. The second funding source I'll mention is the Carl D. Perkins Act, or Perkins 5. For those of you who have worked in and around career and tech education, you're probably familiar with Perkins funds. Perkins is the primary way through which the federal government funds CTE. These dollars are specifically for career and technical educated, <laughs> career and technical education and are allocated year over year. The law here is very, very clear. It includes six required uses of these funds. Five of the six align perfectly with PLTW investment categories, making Perkins a great source of funding. I'm including a handful of resources here that will help you further navigate the law. Importantly, there is a link here where you can access your state approved Perkins 5 plan. This is very important for review because it will further clarify how the state in which you teach wants to see these funds spent. You'll get information about performance levels, programs of study, definitions of size, scope, and quality, et cetera. Also, your local district will have an improved plan, which is revised frequently and needs to be based on performance, local performance data. That will give you even more details. Some of you might have even been involved with the development of these plans. The next source of federal funding I want to highlight comes to you through the Every Student Succeeds Act or ESSA. Now, you might not be overly familiar with ESSA, but I'm guessing you are familiar with the funds that come through this act. This act governs title funds, and you've likely heard of Title I, Title II, et cetera. This is the federal law that creates those programs. There are a total of nine title programs in ESSA. Each one of those has a specific use. We've identified four titles that connect to one or more of the PLTW investment categories. Like Perkins, there are both state and local plans that further clarify how these funds can be spent. I've linked to some resources here that will help you find and review those plans. We've also created some materials that describe certain title programs and explain how they can connect to PLTW, which are included as well. To help make sense of all the possible federal funding sources and how they link to PLTW, we've created a funding side-by-side -side resource on our website. This will help you see what federal funds are available and which ones can be used for our three investment categories. The document covers ARP funds, as well as Perkins and ESSA title funds. When it comes to those second two options, the nice thing about this document and the additional resources we have here is that they go to the very specific required uses for the federal laws. Lastly, we can't talk about funding without also mentioning the source of the majority of money spent locally, the local general fund. Revenues from state and local sources typically make up a district's general fund which is the primary operating budget used to fund a district's expenses over a given year. These funds are often considered to be unrestricted because it is entirely up to the local education agency's governing body, typically your local school board, to determine how these funds are used. The big idea here is to include PLTW in your school and your district's overall strategic plan and vision for how teachers and students will reach objectives and succeed. Once that is done, it becomes much easier and apparent how the funds in a local general fund could and should be used to start, scale, and sustain PLTW. In addition to the wide variety of federal, state, and local funding opportunities available for PLTW programs, we also have PLTW grants. Through these grants, PLTW will partner with your school or district to help you throughout your PLTW implement implementation. Applying for PLTW grants is easy through our simple application process located in your My PLTW account, and you can create this account quickly and easily on our website. We award grants on a rolling basis from July 1 through June 30, so schools may submit applications annually. PLTW keeps applications on file until June 30 of each year, so we may consider schools for more than one grant opportunity throughout the funding cycle. And this year, we have more grants available to schools than ever before. We have brand new grant opportunities for all five of our programs currently available on our website. 
These new PLTW grants will cover the cost of teacher training, as well as program participation fees for the next two years. So please check out our grant opportunity webpage to find out more and schedule a meeting with your local PLTW team member. We are ready and willing to find out more about your district vision and help you with your grant application. 